fat and starch. These two men aren't stuffing themselves with salami sandwiches just for fun. They're part of a research project and are being closely monitored by two scientists from a Swiss research center. Each subject has to eat precisely 1,500 calories on an empty stomach. The slices of bread are thickly smeared with coconut oil and topped with greasy salami. Then each also downs one and a half hard-boiled eggs. That's the meal plan in this study on human digestion. At the beginning it was okay, but after a while, it's no fun anymore eating all this fatty stuff. It's really intense. In the morning you're hungry and happy to finally get something to eat, but it's too much. The test meal has been deliberately selected to be so rich in fat. We're looking at the inflammation after the meal. It's an inflammatory reaction that occurs naturally in the body as a response to foreign substances. Similar to an inflammation reaction, this phenomenon is especially measurable after a meal high in fats. In a checkup, the researchers measure the subject's body mass index, which is very high. They also take 100 milliliters of blood for the lab. That way, they can identify inflammation biomarkers that appear as a result of the diet. It's all part of experiments in which Katrin kopf bolans is mimicking the entire human digestive process in the lab. The project has been running for a year and a half. At the moment, she's focusing on cheese. It's being grated and enriched with an enzyme cocktail that replicates human saliva. The processes like chewing and swallowing that occur in the mouth and esophagus are simulated with this device. The human stomach. This is where chemical breakdown of food really gets underway. The nutritional scientist adds gastric juices to the samples, then she turns on this rotary device for two hours to simulate events in the stomach. The small intestine. This part of the digestive tract is also being mimicked in the lab. Bile and digestive juices are added to the food samples, which are agitated for another two hours. Reconstructing the intestinal wall has been quite a challenge for the researchers. Working with intestinal cells is both a delicate job and very demanding. Permeable vials containing intestinal cell samples are placed in the blood cell culture samples on the left. Finally, biochemist Charlotte Ega adds digestive juices to the samples to simulate the uptake of nutrients through the intestinal wall by the blood. This process takes up to 12 hours in the cell culture medium, just as it does in the intestine. Up to now, we haven't known what really happens when we drink a glass of milk or eat salami. Precisely what happens at a molecular level in the intestine. That's what we're trying to find out. One thing that is known is that certain foods provoke a reaction similar to inflammation. This test shows how intense it is in response to eating cheese and milk. The more intense the coloration, the stronger the reaction. After the reaction is stopped, the samples change color again. Finally, the researchers use computer software to calculate the precise extent of the response. The result? Basically what we expected. We see that milk and cheese induce a kind of inflammatory reaction, but not a big one. Martin Geis, the project head, is taking the digestive research one step further. He has helped to develop a double-layered microchip coated with living intestinal cells on one side and blood and immune cells on the other. The idea is that it could help classify foods as healthy or unhealthy, depending on the extent to which they cause reactions that resemble inflammation. The NutraChip could make it possible. A very challenging project, bringing all uh, scientific disciplines together, biology, food science, technology, software, engineering, and I think it's a very big satisfaction if at the end it all merges and it works and you can do your analysis in much shorter time than is possible now or even open up totally new applications. 
If the NutriChip fulfills those hopes, it could completely replace clinical studies on digestion. But until that day, the test subjects will have to go on chewing their way through mountains of salami sandwiches, swallowing and digesting their 1,500-calorie meals in the name of science.